and that way that person is not going to be able to breathe. Carotid artery and the jugular vein. Also, if he's managed to hit the spinal cord, this will also cause paralysis. Hi and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Midanveer Singh, an emergency medicine specialist here in the UK. And today we're going to be breaking down Mortal Kombat, the 2021 film. The first scene, the opening scene, which is to do with Scorpion fighting Sub-Zero. There are some amazing fight scenes that we're going to be going through. The acting here is actually done by Hiroyuki, an excellent actor, fantastic martial artist in real life as well. So I've broken it down bit by bit so let's get into it so here we have Hanzo Hanzo later on becomes Scorpion and in this early scene unfortunately Hanzo has lost his wife and his son to the hands of Sub-Zero we're going to be seeing Hanzo use what seems like is a samurai sword traditionally in Mortal Kombat he uses a long sword but also he uses his favorite weapon which is a kunai and you'll see that later on which is essentially is a dagger attached onto a rope now some of these moves are absolutely amazing and I just can't wait to get into it that look that Hanzo gives he knows that their enemy is coming and he is aware he's a fully trained martial artist and he's ready to kick some ass <laughs> Well, that was pretty immense. You can see using his sword, he's cut to the throat and then he's also then cut to the abdomen. So firstly, he's cut to the throat. Now cutting the throat, he's gonna go through anatomical structures such as the trachea, which is the windpipe. And that way that person is not gonna be able to breathe. Also behind that is the food pipe, the esophagus can cause issues later on to do with problems with swallowing. There's major blood vessels here either side, which are known as the carotid artery and the jugular vein and he's completely sliced through those so that person's going to have massive hemorrhage massive bleeding and they're going to bleed out and then you can see that he's done a slice using his sword to the abdomen there and that's probably caused some superficial damage the sword itself may have gone through structures such as the liver the stomach and the spleen and the liver and the spleen carry a massive amount of blood so massive amounts of blood loss can be lost there so massive hemorrhage again And this bit is just absolutely ridiculous how he just chops off the arm. Not much to say here about when you lose an arm, you've lost an arm. Yeah, you've literally gone through all the muscles, the vessels, the nerves and the bone. And that arm is going to be useless. And then you've got a stab through the left side of the chest here. So the heart is situated here. So not only is he going to pierce through the chest wall and cause a pneumothorax, which is air trapped between the lung and the chest wall, but also a hemothorax. So blood will start collecting inside that lung. But that pneumothorax is most likely to become a tension, which means it's going to start exerting pressure and therefore it will squeeze on the heart. But his sword has gone through the chest. Therefore, he would have also pierced the heart. And as you can see, he pulls his sword out. Therefore, there's not going to be a tamponade effect. The bleeding is not going to be contained. This person will just bleed out from their heart. There is no chance of survival from this. Okay, so this next bit was extremely fast, so I've slowed it down and put some freeze frames here again. So you can see that he sliced through this right knee and damaged the structures, which are going to be the ligaments and the bones around the knee. So by slicing through the knee here, he's going to render that leg useless. He stabs the person into the spinal area towards the right hand side. We know this as the right paraspinal area. And through here, he's going to go through structures like we've mentioned before, which are the lungs, the heart. You've got the aorta, the inferior vena cava, so blood vessels which carry a huge amount of blood to different parts of the body. Slicing through those will cause rupture, and that rupture will cause massive hemorrhage, meaning massive internal bleeding leading to death. Also, if he's managed to hit the spinal cord, well, this will also cause paralysis. But paralysis means nothing if you're already dead. And then he uses his sword to stab straight through the head, going through the body. So much damage can be done through that. So firstly, through the head, he would have 
completely disrupted all the neuron connections, the nerve connections in the brain, causing immediate death. And then the sword would have gone down through the neck as well as into the chest and would have caused massive amounts of damage to the other internal organs, such as the airway, the major blood vessels within the neck, and then the major blood vessels within the chest known as the arch of the aorta so we've discussed the aorta earlier on when it comes off from the heart it's known as the arch so the sword having gone through there would have completely ruptured those as well and again he pulls it out meaning that there's no chance of even tamponading those vessels causing massive blood loss let's watch the next scene Okay, so he's getting his kunai ready. You can see that he's attached it onto the rope. If I saw someone attaching something like that to a rope and already have caused that amount of damage to other people, I would literally put my wallet, my keys, my clothes, leave the car. I'd give everything. I'd even give, I'd write something down on a piece of paper. I'd leave my will. I wouldn't want to fight this guy, I would just leave them too. I'd say thank you very much, not going to mess with you, here you go, good night, I'll even buy you dinner, whatever, leave you to it. Okay, wow, wow. The speed and the pace of movement, fantastic choreography. He's used his kunai to slice through two of the heads at the same time. Obviously, it's a sharp instrument, so it would have lacerated through different parts of the face or the neck, depending on what it's hit, causing massive bleeding or disfigurement and significant amount of pain. With the force that it looks like, it would have probably ripped through here, the soft tissues. If it was powerful enough to go through the bone, then it would cause a equivalent of like a Lefort 2 or Lefort 3 type of fracture, which is the equivalent of a hanging face. You don't want that because it can cause airway compromise, which it leads to death. And then he pierces the kunai through two heads. So again, we've covered this before. So this causes an intra cranial injury leading to neuron disruption which damages the connections between the nerves in the brain which can lead to immediate death and also intracranial bleeding so hemorrhage he's used his body to create a massive amount of torque to then pull the rope which then pulls the ninja's head into the ground this confirms that he will definitely finish the job he stabs the next guy in the neck which again would cause damage to the blood vessel to the carotid artery or the jugular vein or even damaging the nerves that are within the neck as well which can control different parts of the abdomen known as the vagus nerve there's another nerve there in the neck which is known as the recurrent laryngeal nerve which controls the voice box if that is damaged it can lead to airway obstruction as the vocal cords will no longer be able to oppose which means that they can't keep themselves open and the vocal cords therefore then remain shut he stabs the next guy not only in the abdomen to guarantee that he's caused major internal bleeding by stabbing through the main organ there which is known as the spleen but then he's also then made a stab through the chest so therefore he's guaranteeing that he's not only causing a pneumothorax potential hemothorax pericardial effusion or actually a rupture of the ventricles completely opening up the heart so you would need a cardiothoracic surgeon and also a general surgeon to help this ninja immediate surgery with a immediate compression of the wound to prevent bleeding out and also the need for a massive blood transfusion. He stabs the guy in the neck to guarantee that he finishes the job causing the similar injuries that we've discussed before. I love this little flip kick that he does, amazing to show his flexibility and maneuverability and then he puts himself into a good position for the other ninjas that are coming up. These next two injuries he's throwing the kunai into the epigastrium. The epigastrium is right here just below the xiphi sternum so just below the sternum and right there we have the 
stomach, but also lying behind that, we've actually got the major blood vessel within the abdomen known as the aorta, and just parallel to it, it also has the inferior vena cava. And sometimes, depending on some people, you may have just the lower aspect of the heart, which contains the right ventricle, which will cause massive internal bleeding. You can see that he pulls this guy, and then he just smashes him through the ground with a clothesline, showing his strength and power. And then he pulls his kunai back out. Now he looks up and he's gonna find Sub-Zero. If I was Sub-Zero, I think I would just call it quits and move on. Basically, I'd go to NASA and ask them for a ticket to another planet because this guy is gonna come and get you and he means business and he knows exactly what he's doing. He's learned his anatomy, he knows where the vital organs are, he knows where the vital structures are and he knows exactly where to place his kunai. Well, I hope that was informative. I hope it was useful. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Watch out for part two where I show the future Scorpion versus Sub-Zero in the final battle. And if you want to watch other fight scenes, broken down by myself then please go and have a look at my playlist and you'll be able to find clips from Marvel's The Punisher, Batman vs Superman and many others that will be coming up. Remember to like, share and subscribe. It's useful to keep growing this channel. It lets me know that people are interested in these types of topics and therefore I can keep creating more content. If you want to watch other things such as The Day in the Life of a Doctor then also check out that playlist. And if you want to look at other medical things, then check out that playlist that I have as well. Remember, learning is good and learning can be fun. Look after yourselves and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.